Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my course on phonetics and phonology. And our topic today is the continuous topic of uh, our last meeting, that is about distinctive features. In the previous video, I introduced you to distinctive features of consonants. And today, I'm going to show you the distinctive features of vowels. Well, unlike distinctive features of consonants which are divided or which are characterized by the presence of manner of articulation, place of articulation, and voicing, in identifying distinctive features of vowels, what we need is to identify only two parts of our articulators. They are our lips, and the second one is our tongue. So we have to pay attention to the shape of our lips and the movement of our tongue. There are only four um, identifications of distinctive features of vowels. The first one is raising or lowering the tongue. It means that we identify the distinctive features of vowels based on the movement of our tongue by raising, okay, by raising. And the second one is by lowering our tongue. The second one is by advancing or retracting our tongue, by moving our tongue to the front and by moving our tongue to the back position. The third one is by shaping our lips, by rounding, or unrounding our lips. And the last one is by providing tense or legs. So distinctive features of vowels are characterized by four factors. The first factor is raising or lowering the tongue. The second one is advancing or retracting the tongue. The third one is rounding or unrounding the lips. And the last one is providing tense or legs. Now, by raising or lowering our tongue, we have two positions here, or we have two features. The first feature is high, and the second feature is low. So we have positive high, we have positive low. Even though in a cardinal vowel that a vowels are divided into three parts, high, middle, and low. But for the distinctive features of vowels, vowels are characterized by positive high and positive low. There is no positive middle. Positive middle is represented by negative high and negative low. In other words, we use two features altogether in order to show the middle position of the sound. The second one is by advancing or retracting the tongue, we also have two features. The first feature is front and the second feature is back. Even though there are three positions identified in our cardinal vowel, but based on distinctive features, only two of them are used, front and back. How about central? Central is represented by negative front and negative back. So it is similar with what happened to middle vowels. Okay, so central vowel is represented or is uh, described by using two features, negative front and negative back. So there is no neg positive central. The next one, by rounding or unrounding the lips, we have, of course, you know, positive round and negative round. Positive round, uh, is produced by rounding our lips. So, you know, that some vowels in English are produced by rounding our lips or by making our lips, okay, by making our lips shape round. And the last one is providing tense or legs, okay? Uh, for providing tense, we have positive tense and we have provided legs the vowel belongs to negative tense vowels.
Okay, so Vera, these are the distinctive features of vowels. We have positive high, positive low, positive front, positive back, positive round, negative round, and positive tense, negative tense. Now, let's see the cardinal vowel. Okay, these are vowels that we are going to describe by using their distinctive features. And each of the vowels must be able to be characterized exclusively based on their distinctive features. Okay, now let's try to describe the distinctive features of E. Okay, so this is indicated by colon to, to show long E such as, you know, these, okay? So you have to say it these by long vowels. Now, let's see the example. So E is described as positive high, okay? You can see that in the picture of kind of vowels that E is located in the high position and also in the front position. So E is high, E is front. However, okay, when you only use positive high and positive front, we still have two vowels, E and E. So we have to specify the features so that we only describe E. So we have one more feature that is positive tense. You know, long E, when you produce E, there must be a tense. Therefore, we describe E as high front tense vowel. Now, let's compare E with uh, the other vowel, which is located in the high and front position. Okay, this is A. Okay, actually, this is between E and A. So, uh, in the middle, we have here A. Okay. This is also high and front vowel, okay? High and front vowel. However, it is not tense. So we put the negative tense. So you can see there that E and A are different in terms of their distinctive features. And what makes them different is tense, okay? The tense feature. If E is positive tense, and A is negative tense. Okay, the next vowel, let's see U. U here is described as high vowel, but it is not located in the front because we need to retract the body of our tongue. We need to move back the position of our tongue so it belongs to positive back. Okay, so positive high and positive back. Okay. And the other one, the other feature here, that U is also tense. So we provided there positive tense. So U is described as high, back, and tense vowel. Okay, the next vowel that we uh, that I'm going you uh, I'm going to show you here is O. Okay, O. Okay, you can feel it by yourself that when you produce R, okay, you retract the position of your tongue. You, you move back the position of your tongue. Okay, so we describe here as positive back. However, it is not located in the high position in the cardinal vowel, but it is in the middle. So we describe it as negative high and negative low. Actually, there's another vowel that belongs to positive back, negative high, and negative low. That is, uh, therefore, we need to add one more feature. What is it? We use round, positive round, because R, you need to shape, okay? You need to shape your lips in a round shape, okay? Therefore, R is positive back, negative high, negative low, and positive round. Let's compare R with the other almost similar vowel that is R. 
Okay. A is also positive back, negative high, and negative low. However, it is not rounded. Okay. You should not round the, the shape of your lips. So it belongs to negative round. So you can see there that, that each of the vowels is also different when they are described based on their own distinctive features. Okay, that's all. These are the distinctive features of vowels. Once again, I told you that uh, distinctive features of vowels are characterized by four factors. The first one by uh, advancing or retracting your tongue or the position of your tongue. So we have front vowel and back vowel. And then you need to raise or lower down your uh, the position of your tongue. So we have high vowels and we have low vowels. And then the third factor is um, rounding or not rounding the shape of our lips. So we have positive round or round vowels, and we have also unround vowels. And the last one is by providing tense or legs. Therefore, some vowels are tense and some other vowels are legs or negative tense. Okay, that's all. See you in the next video.